Pre-order the Clownfish TV comic book right now on Indiegogo. Go to clownfishtvcomic.com. That's clownfishtvcomic.com. This is a fun collection of all new comic strips based on dumb stuff we've said on the show. Again, that's clownfishtvcomic.com. You're going to have to hurry. We're only taking pre-orders for a limited time. Now we're going to get back into the show. Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about Disney. Of course, of course we are. And yes, we're going to yes. talk about Disney taking actors' voices. You know, progressive, mm -hmm. wonderful Disney that's asking its showrunners to cross the picket line. They were the first ones. They were the you, very we first We can't say. Ones. We haven't heard anything from Bob Iger. And isn't he, according to, you know, the internet, the voice of the people, the voice of reason, the voice of the, 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 the marginalized, he'd be your defender, right? No, Disney was the first one to tell people to cross the picket line. They even gave directions about how you could quit the union and everything else in that, in that email they sent out. Yeah. Yeah, so that's um, that's pretty telling, guys. Disney is exactly the company we've said they were. Uh, I hate to break it to you. I hate to burst your bubble. And, uh, you know, there are some people that take issue with us uh, talking about the DeSantis situation. We've said before, we don't know which way it's going to go. But I think it's highly ironic that they're being portrayed as the good guys in that situation when they prove otherwise. Mm -hmm. uh, all, pretty, all the time. All the time. Like, everybody just ignores all this other stuff and they just look at the DeSantis situation. So we're gonna talk about this latest uh, cash grab by the mouse. Um, this is coming from CBR, who got it from what? The New York Times, that now Disney is trying to steal actors, voices, likenesses. We've talked about this before. If Disney had it their way, and other studios too, not just Disney, but they are definitely leading the charge. They would create 100% digital actors and uh, you know use or use uh, legacy actors and use their likenesses and voices forever. Mm -hmm. Just imagine having access to 35 year old Harrison Ford forever. Right. You can make as many Indiana Jones movies as you wanted to. And this is going to tie in. This goes back to the AI that the writers are strikes upset about. They're also worried moving forward that the SAG AFTRA is going to be up again for their contract renewal. I think the directors guilds up for their contract renewal. Right now Hollywood is in a position let's put it that way because everybody's coming up for their uh tall even <laughs> hollywood is often in a position sometimes on their knees sometimes bent okay. over can we I knew, sometimes on i their thought backs. You because i said coming up but anyway oh, okay um, well that happens later um anyway so now the actors union is upset because they're they're worried that in the contracts they're going to get later this summer or this, this summer, sometime this summer, that it's going to have uh, wording in it that might mean that they have to give up their voice rights. I guess some contracts that have come up in the past where they were demanding voice rights from actors. So basically, it can cut you out and just keep using your voice for like de-aged or animated or whatever projects they wanted to do. They're using AI now, and they've, they've shown the technology where they actually can take and change performances. They can actually change lines uh, mm -hmm. post-production they can, uh, you know, for dubs, they can actually have the, the actors uh, lip sync better for the dubs. But actors are concerned because they're like, OK, the performance I film might not be the performance that's actually used. They could actually go in and put words in my mouth like right. Netflix could go back and be like, hey, Jenna Ortega, you didn't like those those Wednesday lines. We're going to after the fact, put them in your mouth anyway. Right, right. You know, and the next question is, if an actor wins an award, does the act, does the actor actually do the work? Or were they, was it, the, edit, the actor sucks, but they're either pretty, but they can't act worth shit. That's okay. We'll just fix it in post. It was just that pretty much. That's what I think is going to happen. Or you could have, you know, it could be like a, a Cyrano type situation where you've got, you know, one actor actually giving the performance and then somebody else who might be more attractive mm -hmm. is the face of it. You know, and then you've got like synth actors, which I think I think is going to be a thing. I think so too. I'm like, why don't just go completely synthetic, just make up people? Like, what was that movie called? Um, Simone. Simone. Was that what it was? Yeah. Yeah, just like that. But it was gem before that. But yeah, yeah. I think that's going to happen. Gem before that, yes, yes. I, I think we're getting to a place right now where we are going to have the next generation hollow deck, where you basically just punch in with AI. And I was thinking about this the other day because we keep talking about you know all this AI technology, and I think this is what Hollywood was afraid of. Everybody can create their own movies just by punching in some parameters. I want 
another Indiana Jones movie where Harrison Ford is 35 years old that takes place between these two movies and whatever. Or I want, um, hey, you know, like we did the experiment with the AI rewriting the Star Wars sequels. Mm -hmm. Be like, hey, uh, could you go back and just make me three new Star Wars movies that aren't Disney's? What what George Lucas would have done. And yeah, do it with, with Han, Luke, and Leia, yeah. and then we'll just put them in. Yeah, we could do that. And look, um, James Earl Jones has already sold his Vader voice to Disney. They will be using his Vader voice for years, which in some ways... I'm o- I'm okay with that. I think it's up to the person. They are, if they feel comfortable with it, that's their choice. Right. And I think in that case, his voice is so iconic, I can't imagine anyone else doing it. They've tried using other actors in like Star Wars video games and stuff to do Vader, and it really just sounds like a bad impersonation. Well, he didn't, you know, it wasn't his idea. I'm sure they came to him. It was Disney wanting to do it. Disney's idea. They talk yeah. about where it came from in this article. But before we get into it any further. Before we get into it any further, further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. You'll get a woohoo if you do. Woohoo! Uh, hit the thumbs up. Hit you know, ring the bell for the notifications and all that stuff. Uh, check out our comics projects out there. Uh, we've got some comics, and you've probably seen the commercial for that. So, so this is coming from CBR. A new report suggests some of Hollywood's major studios are taking a page from the playbook of the Little Mermaid Sea Witch by seeking ownership of actors' voices. The reason they did that, I'm telling you right now. Is because everybody's looking for Little Mermaid news. Well, you know what? They, you know what would be interesting though, if they had okay, say say I was an actor and say I gave them the rights to my voice, supposedly so they could use it to do like other things in that franchise or whatever. Yeah. But what if they got mad at me for some reason? What if they got what? What could they do with my voice? Would I not? Would they say, well, we own the rights to your voice, so you can't speak anymore in films? Could they take problematic actors and turn them into digital activists? Could they have you doing like PSAs, like be like? You know, hey, Chris Pratt hasn't hasn't uh, given his endorsement of whatever the current thing is. We'll just we'll just make Chris well, Pratt do that. I don't know if they'll do that so much as, but they own your voice. If they tell yeah. you you own your voice, and, and I mean, depending on the, of course, depending on the contract. But you have to you'd have to be really having a lawyer on top of that because yes. what if they would do something like we're mad at you right now, so we own your voice and you can't act for anybody else, or we don't want this actor to leave us and go work for the competition, like Marvel DC kind of thing. Yeah. So we own the rights to your voice. You can't go over there and, and do movies because you you have to speak every time you leave a voicemail you have to pay mickey royalties that's right because that's that is mickey's voice that you're using i, I know that's an extreme case that that's is unlikely not very but unlikely just saying, but, but. i mean who says they can't do it and given how petty disney is yeah you know i can see i mean look at how they treated scarlett johansson during mm-hmm. that you know and she was just like hey i just want the money i was due you guys are being total Oh, dicks. they painted her like, you know, you're a money-grubbing, you know. Money-grubbing harlot. And it says, yeah, yeah, it says, it says them who, you know. Again, this is this is uh, Disney, the good guys, mm-hmm. uh, trying to, to backpedal on a, a, a contractual obligation to Scarlett Johansson and painting her as basically being a money-grubbing hoe. That's mm-hmm. what how they, you know, they came out. Oh, because Black Widow was a yeah. hoe. Yeah. 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 Um, so anyway, per the New York Times, and that's uh, this article here, and it's a pretty lengthy article talking about AI. Uh, the Actors Union of sag claims that its members have reported contracts which would give studios the right to use the signatory's voice to craft new performances in the future. The New York Times highlights a Netflix contract that would allow the company to simulate an actor's voice by all technologies and processes now known or hereafter developed throughout the universe for all time, forever, forever yeah, and ever that's... and ever and ever and ever. Um, not, not, of course, that was Netflix, not Disney, but Disney's already been... Buying people's voices. Well, that's that's the thing, because we don't know. I mean, look how fast AI technology has advanced. And, you know, we don't know where it's going to be 10 years from now. Again, I think eventually we're going to get to, why are these ads? My God, CBR. Um, I, I think we're going to get to a place where everybody can just punch in the parameters and make their own movies, make their own TV shows. And then we're going to have very personalized entertainment. Amazon's doing it. Amazon is already generating. Uh, they just had an article the other day. They're going to gener- generate personalized ads based on the user via AI. So everybody's going to get different ads based on who they are, what their interests are. Well, I was thinking about Disney and the voices and stuff. Well, what if they want to, well, we own your voice, so we can just, we have a new animated feature coming out. We'll just put you in it. Well, you don't have to come in and act. You don't even get paid for it. We own your voice. Yeah. You know, Um, I mean, there's so many things that it's, we'd be like, well, that's very best pushing. They probably won't do that. Yeah, I agree. But, 
we don't know how far they're going to take this. If a turn push comes to shove and we're in strikes for a long time or strikes happen again and it's going to hurt their bottom line, I guarantee you they're going to try to find uh, wording to put in contracts to, to trick or to have loopholes to get through it so they can use you without you being there. Yep. Um, and they talked about Disney leading the charge. And it was Star Wars that, you know, uh, Darth Vader makes sense, you know, and even then, if it's not, I mean, people had problems with James Earl Jones voice in, you know, uh, Obi-Wan, but Darth Vader has a robotic voice. So you can, there's right. a little more leeway there, right? And again, it's up to the, it's up to the, the, the actor. I mean, honestly, if they want to agree to it or not, that's their choice. I'm just saying this is what could happen. Yeah. And they said that um, they, this is Reese Features, the company They said they use the technique to recreate the voice of a young Luke Skywalker mm -hmm. in the book of Boba Fett. And they actually did a better job with him, I think, in Boba Fett than they did at the end of you know, yeah. Mandalorian season two. But the, the thing is, is that they've been practicing for years because I thought it was very, very weird. And it's, it, it struck as being very odd to me that like literally every Disney movie for the past 10 years has featured that de-aging technology. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why are they pushing this so damn hard? Because it started with actually it started with Tron Legacy. That was the first time they yeah. used it. And it was really off. I just didn't like Tron Legacy. Sorry. I know. I know. I, I liked it. Was, it was supposed to set up another movie and it never came out. But um, but it, and that was forgivable because we're talking about Clue, who was a program. So if he looked fakey. It made sense. It yes. made sense. So that was okay. They've been practicing. They've been thinking about this for a long time. Every one of these movies, like for no reason. They're like, oh, let's have a flashback with a young version of this character for no reason. You know, and it's literally like every MCU R movie. It was R&D. This was all R&D. They were basically using par personal opinion because, again, we know how they think based on experience. No, nah, you're a liar. Um, they were using part of the movie budget. Every one of these MCU movies and now Star Wars and uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, they did it with Johnny Depp. They wanted to test and see, you know, if if audiences would buy it. And they were using probably kicking a couple million dollars over to R&D for this technology the whole time. They've been developing this technology well, the whole time. Disney has their programs that where they work with um, technology companies and, and they the incubators and accelerator programs that they give money to these companies to develop technology that further technology that Disney can then use. I'm sure that this stuff is part of it. I'm, I'm sure of it. So let's play devil's advocate because everybody thinks I'm the devil anyway, so I might as well go all in. Look at from the studio's point of view. How many problematic actors have you had to deal with? How many drug addicted actors? How many uh, uh, activist, actors. activist actors? How many actors saying dumb shit on Twitter on one side of the aisle or the other? How many problems could be avoided if you had complete control over your cast for your movie well, I'm thinking more like we have the strikes. How, how, when the, it's going to impact your bottom line because your movies or your shows can't come out because they're going to be delayed and you're going to lose money. Wouldn't it be a lot easier to, you know, control everything about it? So even if the strike would happen, well, that's okay. You signed your, you signed your rights over. Even though the, that's not what you thought. You still, there's this loophole. So we can use those now yes. while you're not here to can, to further this project along. And if you come back, great. If you don't come back. Well, we're just going to do it without you and you're not going to get paid for it. Send in a droid. Yeah, <laughs> you know, kind of. Roll out the droids, guys. And then the funny thing is, is that to audiences, they might be like, oh, look, we've got young Harrison Ford back. We've got like, wow, look, another, it's like Star Wars episode 5.5. They're just going to make an old, you know, with all these old characters. I love this. We're yeah. going to go see Everybody this. Everybody we know and love never changed. Everybody we know and love. I mean, which on one hand is kind of fun, but on the other hand, it's like, but that's kind of not right. You know? <laughs> so. Yeah. So, I mean, they're talking about strike, but yeah, you know, you, and again, use a Star Wars analogy. The second Death Star doesn't look finished, but I guarantee you they were waiting for it's it. It's operational. Well, they said it's so. Yeah. They said that, like, in regards to different projects that are still moving forward, uh, we talked about with the, the the Rings of Power. Yeah. They, they and we, I saw something the other day, they were talking about all these scripts were turned in late Monday, but right before the strikes happened. People were working really hard to turn stuff in so that they could have it turned in before the strike happened so that things could progress without them. 
Because I know if it stops, when it comes when it comes back, when the times come back, it, you know, everything's going to be backed up and it's going to cause more problems later or people might not get paid or whatever. If you submitted it, you still got paid. So mm-hmm. they were just slamming the shit in before the deadline um, so things could progress. And they're progressing without them. And then the people that started the whole thing of you cross the picket line and we'll pay your fines, but you get your butt in here was Disney. Yeah. Um, you're talking about the other, see, this is the sag aftras upcoming negotiations. And we have the Directors Guilds coming up, and I think this week. And then we had the Writers Guild. Now the Actors Guild, okay, is coming into play. Um, that they were supposed to have um, so June 7th, the terms of a new contract. Okay, if they're not settled by June 30th, they may strike. So now we're going to have the actors striking. The writers are already on strike. And we don't know where the directors are going to go yet. Um, so I am reading, and again, this is, you know, all speculation, but I am reading that Hollywood needs to hunker down because they're thinking the strike, the strikes that could be compounded could go on for like a year, which means we're going to have this huge dry spell, lack of content. Again, oh, there's, no, there's plenty of content. It's not from them. And I think this is probably... And again, back to the strike. And look, I understand people trying to get more money. I get that. But I think right now is a really bad time to ask because there are options to replace you. And they But there's always going to be options to replace moving forward. Yeah. When do you ask? I I don't know. I I mean, and I think if you're just asking for certain things that are reasonable, that's one thing. But then when you have people like, but you have to have so many writers in the writer's room. This is why they're so afraid of AI. And they have a right to be afraid of AI. I don't blame them. I totally don't blame them. I have seen um, I've seen entire issues of comic books generated on on Facebook, um, and I think it was actually uh, Dave Campetti posted pictures, and uh, but it was an actual comic book. Now I think the person put in the prompts, you know, panel by panel, then you mm-hmm. know, put the panels together, and look, they still have a problem with hands, but eventually this technology is going to get to a point where you can be like, hey, draw me a, a 1992. X-Men comic that looks like Jim Lee drew it and has, you know what I'm saying? And it, it is, it's, it's scary, but I mean, it's scary. I, I completely get it, but it's also for small teams, you know, and that's, that's what they're worried about with the, the, uh, the writer's rooms. I mean, you can have one or two writers oversee the production of an entire you season of a show. You still need human element to make sure. You need a human wants. element. Yeah, you so don't obviously. need as many. Just like the, everything else. The computer's else. not going to know what, what would translate the screen like a person would. Like, oh, they might have ideas, but that doesn't mean it's going to translate well. Yeah, and you can use the AI uh, again for now. I mean, it might get the place where it, it whole cloth just spits stuff out. That's scary. That is scary. But for now, uh, you can use it as a, basically a digital assistant to be like, okay, I'm struggling um, with this story, and this is these are the parameters, these are the characters. What are some based on everything else that's happened and everything you know about storytelling, uh, Mister Ms. AI? Um, what could be some possible outcomes of this? Could you give me some ideas? And then you, as the human, go in and be like, "Oh yeah, okay, I like this one. Can we elaborate on that? Mm-hmm. You know, this one. And what do you think would happen?" And, or We're, just take what they have and then build off. Flesh of it. it out. Yeah, like well, we need two PR, two writers for that. You know? Well, that was like that was like Star Wars. I mean, we basically put in the parameters and it spit out a very rough treatment. That could but, be worked with. But it could be worked with. You could give that to human writers and say, "Look, this is an outline um, based on what we basically told it. Make us more money than than Endgame. This is what the AI says is going to work. Now you go write us a script. You know, um, I put out there." Today, and it's going to be a very unpopular opinion going back to comic books, but I said I could see AI working more as an editorial assistant than as uh, just a script writer. Because what you could do is program in everything you know about the characters in the comic book series, whatever. I mean, decades and decades of history. And you can run scripts, human generated scripts through that and be like, does anything in this script contradict anything that has come before? Because right now, especially at like Marvel, where they're not really paying attention, there are all kinds of continuity errors. Uh, it's only they've done that with Transformers, right? Right now, I know, right? It's only <laughs> but there are there are because you know you can't expect one person to know everything, and they're not no, willing. So that's to... That's a helpful thing there. That's that a, is that, a helpful that's thing. a useful you know use for it. But... Side side note: When I was doing the um, when I was doing the Star Wars script, I just wanted to see what AI said, and I punched in. Hey, AI, do you know anything about Bobby Drake from X-Men? 
Yes. Well, what can you tell me about his personality? And it spit out the personality and actually had, well, Bobby Drake has dated all these people. None of them were men. And I said, okay, well, based on what you know about the history of Bobby Drake as Iceman, by the way, for those of you who don't know, based on the history of Iceman from 1963 to the year 2000, is there anything to indicate in any comic story ever that Bobby Drake was gay? No. The answer yeah, was, was no, there's absolutely nothing to indicate. But then it had a disclaimer. But comic book creators are known to, uh, uh, you know, retcon characters and whatever. But those parameters, 1963 to 2000, there's absolutely nothing to indicate that Bobby Drake is gay, lean gay, had any mm-hmm. interest in men. I'm like, well, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I could have caught that and been like, yeah, it's a huge mistake to just turn him gay all of a sudden mm-hmm. because it contradicts everything. Um, but yeah, I can see, I can see where they're concerned. I mean, it is, it is definitely something that needs to be discussed. I don't think they're going to get what they want though. And I think what's going to happen is we're going to have more productions made with fewer people and that's what they're afraid of. Well, the thing about the voice is, I mean, if an actor wants to do that and goes along with it and gets a lot of money for it, then, you know, that's their choice. I I think it's a a choice. I don't think it should be a mandate. No. So if the contracts, you know, put that as, you know, something that could be written in, if you agree, that's one thing, but I'd be careful and I would definitely have my contracts quadruple checked by lawyers to make sure there aren't loopholes that they can somehow take it and use it if there's another strike or if they have the commercials. You know, or... If the company is you know facing an issue because of blah 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 factors, we can take your voice and then use it anyway. You know, I'd I'd be double checking that for sure. Yeah, and I think that you know it would probably work like like any kind of recording. They'd probably have you know have royalty structure or something there. Like you use my voice, but every time you use it, I get paid. Hopefully, you know? better residuals of the writers. Yeah, hopefully getting, better so. residuals. So we're gonna wrap this up, guys. Yeah. Uh, this is not gonna end anytime soon. And I do not think it, again, I could be wrong, but I don't think it's going to go the way that the writers are hoping it's going to go. And I think they know that, which is why there's so much pressure to, you know, get something through. Um, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. And we'll Help talk support later. the Bye. channel. Go to thereef.support and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's thereef.support.